Hello and uh, welcome to the third realm. If you follow the channel you might have seen a couple of videos about a temporary Merklin layout I am currently working on. If you haven't I strongly recommend you watch the other videos in the series accessible via the little card at the top of the screen now. In the last episode I finally completed the work required to bring the main line to capacity. We finally got to see a bit of bridge and ramp action and I now have seven trains circulating in safety around the line. I will leave this part of the layout aside for a bit and concentrate on the industry area this week. It is located in the middle of the layout and at the moment it's a big empty grey gap. I had planned to install a couple of sidings and maybe use it with a shunter and some cars and also install a crane in the area. But thinking about it, I think it's going to be a bit boring. So, I'd like to make this a bit more interesting. I could of course use some uncouplers and do some remote shunting, just increase the uh, level of play in the area. But I know myself and I'm likely to install all these uncouplers and the wiring and not use it at all. In the last layout I had installed a shuttle line in the middle of the layout with a rail bus going back and forth. To control it I used a Merklin controller 6600 with its shuttle function. If you want some more information about this controller I have done a little helper video which I've linked in the top right hand corner of the screen now. So I've been thinking that I could reuse this controller and simulate some movement in the industry area. Maybe take a little shunter, let it go back and forth and maybe even add some uncouplers in the mix and have the shunter pick up or leave cars here and there automatically. I could connect the uncouplers to switching tracks. I've never tried this, so I thought I'd have a little proof of concept first. So I've set up a shuttle line with two switching tracks on each side. That's where the locomotive will reverse to go back in the other direction. Next to one of the switching tracks I've put an uncoupler and I've connected it to that switching track to the other port so that it's triggered when the locomotive reverses back and hopefully the locomotive will leave the car there. So let's give this a try. So I set the locomotive in motion, it goes, waits, reverses, goes back the other way, stops, waits, reverses, leaves the car there. It seems to work. Let me uh, disable the uncoupler and see what happens. and it picked up the car. I reactivate the uncoupler just to see if it wasn't a fluke. So the locomotive waits and sets off and leaves the car there. Excellent. I'll deactivate the uncoupler again and see if the car's getting picked up when the locomotive goes back the other way and it does. Fantastic. Well I think I could use this. So armed with this knowledge I went off and uh, had a think and redesigned the industry area to incorporate the bits and pieces required for an automated shunting scene that will work using the usual party tricks, contact tracks and switching tracks and relays but unfortunately I've run out of uh, Merklin relays, but I have quite a few of those simple bistable relays which I can mount on some perf board and use them instead. That's actually probably a bit better and space saving. So I went off and a few more days later I had a wiring diagram, well sort of, more a mess of a diagram if you ask me 
but at least I knew where I was going. So I set off to do a bit of preparation work and started with my little relays which are mounted on some prototyping board. I then looked at the switching tracks I had left and adjusted them so that they work reliably. And then I set off and laid the track for the industry area. So let's have a look at the working principles of that area. So I have a scene with a shunter and a wagon on one side and a wagon on the other side on a siding. The uh, locomotive will go on its way pushing a car to the first siding. There it will activate the uncoupler, reverse and go back to the siding it came from. It will reverse again and go on its way and go over the turnout which will have changed in the meantime to the second siding and pick up the car that was that is there. It will reverse and go back to the siding it came from. There it will reverse again and this time go over the crossing which will have been changed enter siding 3 and leave the car it picked up on siding 2 there. It will reverse and go now to another locomotive siding, reverse and go back to siding 1. So all the uh, crossing and turnouts will have changed in the meantime. The locomotive will reverse and go back to the second locomotive siding, reverse there and go back, go over the crossing and the turnout which will have changed, leave the car on siding 2, wait and reverse to go back to the second locomotive siding. There it will reverse again and go over the crossing this time, straight across to pick up the car there. Then it will reverse again, pull the car and go this time to the first locomotive siding and the process will start from scratch. So now I'm going to have to wire this up. So I have to proceed methodically and I'll basically break everything up in logical blocks. First of all I start with the easy bit which are the shuttle controls. I need to connect the controller to each switching track at the end of the sidings on all sides. They are all connected to each other. I've daisy chained them. So I have a wire going from the local siding 1 and 2 to siding 3, 2 and 1 and then a wire from there going to the controller. Now I shall have a look at the uncouplers. They are a bit trickier. Each uncoupler will be triggered by a switching track. Now a locomotive entering a siding with a car will want to leave it there, so the uncoupler needs to be active. And when a locomotive enters the siding without a car, it will want to pick one up, so the uncoupler needs to be deactivated. So I need to control the current path from the switching track to the uncouplers using one of my relays. So I'll set up my uh, uh, three sidings in two distinct groups where the switching tracks will be connected to the common input of each side of the relay. So siding 1 and 3 will be controlled by one side of the relay and siding, the siding in the middle, siding 2, will be controlled by the other side of the relay. The relay itself will be toggled when the locomotive reaches a different position on the layout. Right, let's have a look at the turnout 
controlling the axis to siding 1 and 2. There I'm going to do a very easy wiring. I'm simply going to add a switching track just after the turnout so that when a locomotive enters siding 1 it will trigger the switching track and change the turnout to the round position. The next time a locomotive goes over the turnout it will go into siding 2 and when doing so it will trigger the switching track and change the turnout to the straight position so that it pushes a locomotive back to siding 1 the next time around. So that was relatively painless. Let's move on to something a bit more complicated, the crossing. It needs to be set to a straight position to allow travel from the locomotive sidings into siding 3 only in one condition, that's when a locomotive has been to siding 2 and is returning back to the locomotive siding and the crossing needs to be set back to a round position only after a locomotive has left siding 3 and returned to the locomotive siding. That's another job for one of my relays. So I've connected the control cables of the crossing to the outputs of the relay and I've added two switching tracks in the sidings to control the toggle port of the relay to change the current path depending on the siding a locomotive is leaving. This way I can move the trigger point for the changeover of the crossing outside this siding area and uh, into the locomotive siding area. There I have connected the shared input of the relay to two switching tracks which will send an impulse of current and trigger the changeover. I can now move on to the next element in the chain which is the turnout controlling the access to the locomotive sidings. This turnout can only be changed over if a locomotive has reached siding 3. So it will send a locomotive to one or the other siding depending on the status of the contact track controlling the uncoupler. If the uncoupler is active, it will send the locomotive to the top siding uh, on the picture and if the uncoupler is inactive it will send the locomotive to the bottom siding. I can therefore connect the turnout to the same relay controlling the uncouplers on siding 1, 2, 3 and wire it in parallel to the side of the relay controlling the third uncoupler. And I have finally reached the locomotive sidings. There I have to do a last bit of connectivity and that's to attach the toggle cables for the relay controlling all the uncouplers and siding 1, 2, 3. Each siding will be connected in a way that it will toggle the relay over changing the state of the uncouplers on all storage sidings at once. But instead of me entering into an additional circumvoluted explanation, I think we should simply have a look and see if what I've been thinking about for the last few weeks really works. And I shall leave the locomotive and wagons to do the talking.
Well, I think the verdict is out and it's definitely working. And it's much more interesting than an idle industry area left to do nothing by a lazy operator like me. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, this little build was actually quite fun to do. Uh, we still have a bit to go before we finish the build of this temporary layout. But for now I'd like to thank you very much for watching. It's very much appreciated. I'd also like to thank the existing and recent subscribers to the channel. I'm still very surprised that people are interested in my production, so much so that they hit the subscribe button and give me a like from time to time. It's very rewarding and it keeps me going. Thank you very much again. Bye for now.